Welcome to Pitch Perfect's second season. This season, we have a great new crew, a new director, new editors, a new social media team, and a new assistant producer. And remember, Pitch Perfect is 100% student run. We're looking forward to a very exciting season two, and we welcome our newest sponsor, the Entrepreneurship Foundation. So as we know, Pitch Perfect is the place for you to pitch your new business idea, get feedback, and feel what it's like to be on the spot. At Pitch Perfect, we invite students from all over Connecticut to stand on the spot and pitch their business ideas to a panel of judges, each one an entrepreneur and expert in their own right. After each pitch, the judges will decide if you and your pitch have what it takes to make it through to the next round. If you do, we'll help you refine and sharpen your pitch before returning to the spot to pitch again. And if the judges agree, you'll have a chance to compete in our pitch off at the end of the season battling it out to become Pitch Perfect's Student Entrepreneur of the Year. Today, our two contestants, we have two contestants. One will move on and one will not. Now, let's meet our judges. First on my left is Dr. Ron Kunsi. Dr. Kunsi is a professor of marketing here at the University of New Haven and director of the university's nonprofit institute. Welcome, Dr. Kunsi. Next, in the center spot is Dr. Candace Steele. Dr. Deal is an Associate Professor of Accounting at Eastern Connecticut State University, making her third appearance as a judge here on Pitch Perfect. Welcome back, Dr. Deal. And finally, to my right is Warren Fisher, who is the founder and CEO of Zevmir LLC. He's also the publisher of WineByTheDay.com and is a first-time judge here on Pitch Perfect. Welcome, Warren. Okay, our panel is in place. It's time to meet our first contestant. Hello, my name is Shanique Richards and I'm a senior here at the University of New Haven and my goal is to help people personalize their conference experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shanique Richards to Pitch Perfect with her idea called Confidence. Shanique? You're on the spot. You have two minutes. Go. Hello, everyone. My name is Shneek Richards, and I'm here today to present to you Confidence, the premier conference search and conference networking app. Confidence will feature three key components that are ideal for conference goers and business professionals. The first is the network component. This is where conference goers will be able to find all conferences, no matter the industry. Currently, there is no single repository that holds all conferences, so Confidence is looking to create that central hub and location for conferences. The second is the Connect feature. This is where you'll be able to find exactly who you're looking to connect and network with. It'll help you fill out a criteria to put in exactly who you're looking to meet. The third is the Explore component. This is where conference goers will be able to see exactly what's happening in that conference city. You'll be able to find local restaurants, see if there's any festivals happening in town, or even the local jazz band that's playing at a local jazz club. Overall, Confidence is looking to make your conference experience more hassle-free. The target market, we're looking to target conference goers and business professionals. When it comes on to revenue, we're looking to gain revenue through advertising, we'll be following a freemium payment model, and also we'll be getting revenue from event planners who are looking to create their conferences through Confidence. So overall, we're looking to simplify the process of conference going. Thank you. Well, thank you, Shanique. That was great. Super job, super job. So where did this idea come from? Do you have a hospitality or, or conference travel background? So I am a hospitality and tourism management major, and I also work for the Marriott. So that's how the idea ah. came across. Interesting. Let's, not, let's make sure we don't tell them about this. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Well, first we're going to go to Dr. Kunsi. Uh, Dr. Kunsi, what, what are your thoughts for Shanique? Well, first of all, Shanique, it was a wonderful presentation. Very professional. Uh, I think you presented uh, your ideas and elements cogently. You have a plan. You've, you've looked at the key target elements of the business idea. So, so bravo. Good, good presentation. Uh, a couple questions I have, but I'll, I'll stick to the first one. Uh, I like the entertainment stuff because every time I go to a, uh, a conference, I'm, you know, I'm 
there's very few things offered and nobody ever kind of puts it together. But I do have a question about how you're going to get all the uh, uh, information about all the players in the conference and the agenda and where they're going to be because that seems to be something that, that might be difficult to get that information. So currently we are in the development stage of the app. Um, what we started to do was we started to scrape the internet, um, different conference uh, websites such as the IEEE or any industry whatsoever that have a conference website where you, we're essentially scraping their data. Ah. So we're just scraping all those websites and we're putting it in one place. Good, good. All right, Dr. Deal. Okay. Well, awesome presentation, Shanique. Um, I think you hit all of the major points during your presentation. Um, I just have, I have a few questions, but you know, I'll narrow it down to <laughs> one or two. So during the summertime is when I have, I guess, enough time to travel to conferences, but normally during the summer, I'm out of country. So I want to know the conferences that you would be targeting or placing on your, it's an app, right? Correct. Um, would they just be conferences to be held in the, in the U.S. or are you going to also target conferences abroad as well? So to start off, we'll only be targeting conferences in the U.S. But once the app starts getting larger, we, we do want to branch out to different countries. Okay, thank you. And then, of course, um, the accounting in me. I have to ask <laughs> about your revenue stream. So I know you mentioned advertisements, et cetera, et cetera. But just a suggestion, something that you can look at. Perhaps when you start to you know, go on these conferences' websites, maybe you can connect with them directly and offer some coupon or discounts for um, those that would be going through your website to look at these conferences, because sometimes these registration fees are high. So maybe you can connect with the conference organizers and let them know, you know what you're doing and see if they would be able to offer some coupon or discount that you can now advertise um, on your app. Thank so you for just that. a suggestion. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, it, it does seem if you can find find channel partners who have mm -hmm. you know, the clientele mm -hmm. already in place and then partner with them, that could be an interesting way to look at this. Mr. Fisher, what say you? Well, first, thank you for having me, and Shanique, well done. So, I, I am going to ask some of the tougher questions. <laughs> <laughs> and and first of all, have you contacted? any of the conference organizers looked at the software that they're using already and evaluated what you're doing versus the software that's already in the, in the industry? We have not looked at that as yet, no. A number of the larger conferences mm -hmm. and mid-sized conferences are using app software now and those, those apps have similar capabilities to what you're proposing. Uh, a lot of the smaller conferences don't. Mm -hmm. So you might want to consider merchandising your capabilities both as a uh, bring, bring different types of conferences together as well as a service to the conference providers. Um, to to um, back to what you said, um, I think you you're asking me about like competition. Yes. Um, so when it comes on to competition, there isn't a central hub currently. There are conferences that have their own app for that specific conference, but we're trying to eliminate that so that if you're going to five conferences this year, you won't have five different apps on your phone. We're trying to eliminate that so you only have one app that has all those conferences on there, essentially. Understood. Okay. And the monetization, I'm, I'm curious as to how many users you need to have on your site in order to make it worthwhile for people to advertise and or for some piece of either the end user paying you, which sounds difficult, or having the shows pay you? Um, so we're not looking for the users to pay us um, unless you wanted to do something similar to LinkedIn where you wanted to, maybe your page should be on the top or something like that. But for now, for the users, it will be free. Um, who we will be charging, however, is the event planners. So people who want to advertise their conferences on the, on the app, they'll be the ones who will be paying us to do that. Okay. Last, last follow-up. So how will you build traffic to your site? Um, I think definitely through advertisement, like, she, like um, Dr. Deal, <laughs> Dr. Deal mentioned before, um, going through those larger sites and you know creating a partnership with them. That's some way that we could um, drive traffic into the website and app. Okay, thank you. 
Great. Well, thank you, judges. And those are some great questions and some great clarifications on your part, Unique. So um, thank you. It'll be off camera now. And uh, now it's time to meet our next contestant. Hi, my name is Yao. I'm a biomedical engineering master's student here at the University of New Haven. And my goal is to enable college students to find meaningful, long-lasting relationships. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yao Ensong to Pitch Perfect with his idea called Love Realm. Yao, you're on the spot. You have two minutes. Go. Hi, I'm Yao. I'm the founder of Love Realm. Did you know that there are now more single people in the U.S. than are married? 50% of all marriages in the U.S. today end up in a divorce. And with a third of relationships in the U.S. starting on digital platforms, more young people are looking to date on digital platforms. This is why we founded Love Room, a digital platform for people to build stable, stable long-term relationships. Love Room is different from existing platforms such as Tinder and Bumble because it provides a relationship progress tracker to enable couples track the progress of their relationships. It also provides a stable community for couples to be able to ask questions about relationships and provides useful resources like relationship coaches, stories, articles, and tips. We are targeting young people in universities between the ages of 18 and 35 in America. The US online dating market is worth about a billion dollars and Lavrum is hoping to tap into this market by charging a $35 per month subscription fee. The family is a stable unit of the society and Lavrum is hoping to build a stable American society by providing stable long-term relationships. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. What a, what a cool idea. So, so where did it come from? Are you married? No. You're not married, but you obviously <laughs> have identified, it, identified a need for this. So tell me a little bit where the idea came from. Because I've, I've had struggles in my relationships, and there's no supportive community for, for couples to find help. And so I thought it would be very useful. Oh, excellent, excellent. All right, let's see what the judges have to say. Dr. Kunsi. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you for, for targeting a market as a marketing professor that I always tell my students, singles, why are they being ignored by the marketplace, especially divorcees, somewhat older singles, although you're targeting younger singles. Uh, so the idea of actually trying to, to reach out and develop a different app for, or a different uh, process for dating that's not hookup or just entertainment oriented, I applaud. I do have a couple questions. First, how are you different though than, I think I know, but, but, but clarify it a little more like eHarmony or Match.com, which say they're not a hookup site, they're not even a dating site, particularly they're a relationship and gendering site. So how are you different from them first? So we'll be the only platform in the world with a progress tracker. And the progress tracker is very unique because it shows you the list of people you are talking to, and then it encourages you to get committed to one of them, and then it helps you track the relationship thereafter from the first date to you being in a relationship with them. And then after that, it tells you to move on to courtship and then eventually to marriage. So unlike the other platforms, which just matches people, we provide a progress tracker. Again, we also have a supportive community where people can ask questions anonymously, which none of the platforms currently provide. And then we also have useful resources like relationship coaches, um, tips, stories, and stuff. And none of the current platforms provide any of these things. Okay. Um, as a quick follow-up, do you think there's a demand? I, as a guy, <laughs> we get worried about being put on a path. Uh, so have you thought of that as, as a concern? That yeah, Yes, I think there is a demand because actually before the idea evolved into this, we had developed a different product which was not meant for dating. And based on user demand, it actually evolved into this. Okay. And so we have done extensive research with 20,000 users oh. before coming out with this. Bring that out earlier. That's important. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, there will be a, a follow-up show to Dr. Kunsi's uh, dating <laughs> over time. No, no. We'll certainly get to at another time. Um, Dr. Deal. All right. Um, Yao, I just have one question to start off with. Um, 
how do I sign up? <laughs> so <laughs> you apparently have some, you know, some, you some focus interest group right here, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, very good presentation. Um, very, you know, unique idea, and you've already explained how your service, your product, differ differs from, you know, Tinder or eHarmony or Match.com, but. Um, you noted that the major difference is the progress tracker and the community that your um, app would provide. My question is, since your app is providing these additional services and your target market is between 18 to 35, um, two part question here, can someone that's probably not single, not looking, in a relationship already and looking to, I guess, strengthen that relationship, can they still sign up? Yes. For this? Yes. Okay. Okay, and then the other question is, what if the person is older than 35, can they still sign up? Yes, the older people can sign up, except that we are we are targeting in terms of our marketing spend, so that when we are oh. spending on marketing, we're not going to spend on the older person, but then they can join because mm -hmm. there's an app on the store, so okay. we, have, we definitely have older people signing up. So there's still hope for B and Ron, right? <laughs> okay. And, um, I'm 36, <laughs> so yeah. You just barely <laughs> missed just it. Barely. <laughs> and um, the, second, the second question is, you noted that the subscription fee is $35 yeah. per month. So I'm very frugal when it comes to spending, not cheap, frugal. <laughs> When do you anticipate your your users, um, I guess, stop paying for this service? So I guess how long, what's the length of time do you think you would have someone subscribed? Because, you know, the, the, the main purpose is, all right, I'm going on here because I want to find a match and make sure that friendship turns into relationship, into something else. So when do you, when do you think, what's the length of time do you think someone would actually be subscribed to your service? Well, the average customer lifetime value for current dating apps is about three months, and they are just for hookups. So since we are trying to provide a long-term relationship, our platform is not live yet, but what, what I can say is that we are hoping it will, it will be more than three months. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, your third word, last judge. <laughs> yeah, well done. You, you really touched on and all the main topics, but I have, I have some follow-up questions. First of all, tell us a little bit about your team. I, okay. So I'm the founder of Lavro and the CEO. My CEO is Tracy, she's an MBA, and then my CTO is Will, he's a full-stack developer, and then I have other developers also on my team developing it. Very good, and where's the product right now? What, what stage is it in? It's currently in open beta. So we have a live product on the store, which we are modifying. On the store, meaning? On the App Store, App store on the Play Store, yeah, with, with 20,000 users on it. You already have 20,000 users? Yes. Not paying, though, right? No. So, the, so actually what happened, the original platform I built was called LoveRoom, but it was a, a faith-based platform. But then what we realized was that the people on the platform were not using it for discussing faith, they were using it for dating. <laughs> And then we had people traveling across the Atlantic to get married on the platform. Oh, I see. And so we began to look into the data and we realized that everyone on the platform was just looking for dating. And so we decided that then we might as well make it a dating platform. And so we got accepted into some accelerator programs in the US. And then we, they gave us mentors in Silicon Valley. And then we are now modifying the product. Have you tested the pricing? The, the pricing has not been tested. Okay. And the data, you, you have several value props, uh, benefits that, that you've stated with the progress tracker, with, with, with the coaching, relationship coaching. Have you tested that in your surveys? We've tested the relationship coaching because our original platform, which was the faith platform, had, had um, faith counselors. But then what they realized was that most of the people on the platform we're discussing marriage and relationship issues with them. And so we saw that we know that there is a demand for that. Okay. And have you asked why your platform is chosen versus any harmony or other platforms, for example? I, I think those platforms do not provide an open platform for people to discuss these things because one of the unique uh, propositions of our platform is anonymity. 
you can actually post something without revealing your identity and not even Facebook provides that and so people are able to feel free to share their thoughts and their problems without feeling judged. And have you had any follow-ups, if you had any successful relationships that you're able to document and, and, and show as case studies? Yes, there's, there's one couple who actually got married. Um, the, the guy is from New York and the lady is from Philippines and she just moved in to America this week. Very good. Here's well a case study for you. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well, Yao, thank you very much. Um, if you would join Shanique offstage and the judges will begin their deliberation. Great job. Thank you. So judges, look at this. Uh, episode one, season two, probably two of the most interesting pictures we've had during the whole time the program's been on. Um, articulate, well thought out, at least I thought. So I don't envy you and the job that you have to do right now, but now it's time to deliberate and see which one you think moves on to the next round. Oh, well, that was a tough one. Those were two <laughs> great presentations. Exactly. All right, well, we need to come to a decision. So let's talk about Shanique first. What did you guys think about Shanique's presentation? A very polished, excellent presentation. I, I do think both of them have to niche. I think they're too broad. So mm -hmm. I think Shanique's idea is very good, but I think she needs to find a, an area, a specific area that small, smaller conferences, uh, and maybe industrial, in an industrial area or, or you know, like academic conferences or mm -hmm. something that, and I would guess that academics are, is a good one because sure. they're so underdeveloped. But I'm not sure you can just jump off with everything. I don't, I, yeah, sure. I, okay. I, I would agree that it's such a diverse world and, and when you're in an industry, you're gonna Google your industry conferences uh, and you're gonna find probably most of them on a Google search. Right. So mm -hmm. the value here is a um, understanding what your software does and then finding the right conferences that can benefit from it. And I, I believe if uh, Shanique directs her efforts in that way, she has something. Because there, there are some products out there, but they can be better. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think for me personally, um, maybe because I just went through this um, a couple weeks ago, I was looking for different conferences you know, to attend. And I remember having almost eight to 10 tabs up on my computer. So it would have been great if it was in a, you know, one place. But then again, you know, I'm thinking about the target market. And for that, I really didn't get that from her presentation exactly who she's targeting, which industry. And um, I think maybe because I'm in academia, it would work good for me. But, you know, is that going to be the only area that she focuses on? Yeah, and so. from an industry perspective, you have limited marketing dollars. And mm -hmm. it's usually very targeted to a specific audience. Mm -hmm. right. And you know your yeah. industry and where you're going versus... If you're mm -hmm. broad, you probably don't know your market. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay. she focused on the medical field, for instance, all of that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's a great target market. There's mm -hmm. lots of advertisers. There's lots of people that want to target. I think academia, too. And, mm -hmm. and academia is mixed because so many different marketing dis disciplines. Does it, yeah. And it's funny, marketing and management, basically, we both present in each other's universe, mm -hmm. and yet they're never connected. It's like, these are the marketing conferences, these are the right. management conferences, and I've presented in both, and I'm okay. sure lots of management people have, so. All right, Pretty well, good. now what about Yelp's presentation? Hmm. Again, <laughs> that one. <laughs> I, well, I, you know, I'm interested because I'm a single guy you who's divorced. You have personal interest. Yeah. Okay. But Me I, too. And, and you too, yeah, <laughs> uh, but that needs, a target, and I think they've actually got one. They haven't developed, or they, you know, they may not realize why it's working, and that's faith-based, perhaps connecting international people, dating, mm -hmm. um, but with, you know, with with the end game being marriage or a long-term relationship, and it doesn't just have to be international. But I think the faith-based works. Mm -hmm. I, personally, I think guys, if you're told, well, now you're on a, you're on a path. So you had date one, now date two. I, it may scare them away. I think I don't it know what you're saying. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe the reason why they joined the site, because mm -hmm. now, now they're serious. Well, Every, everybody, okay. 
has their time, and when it's their time to get serious, it is may be the hook that, that brings them in. I was concerned initially that there wasn't sufficient differentiation from the other platforms that are out there, but I think I think Yao has some serious uh, benefits to to a site and having 20,000 users okay. already yeah. gives the team the ability to survey, to learn more, to focus their their marketing and re and really micro target. Right. And they ha and kudos to them for getting yeah. this yeah. far. And I, I have to give it to, to Yao and his team. You can see that they've already done their homework. They've already you know, studied the market. They're in advanced stages in comparison to Shanique. The only concern that, you know, and Warren, you noted this already, is I don't see how much it differentiates from um, other matchmaking sites that exist currently. Um, I actually think the old platform, um, whoa, I, I think the face base, I, I think that one would have probably worked better than what they converted it to being a, you know, um, a connect, long-term relationship app. So maybe they should, like you said, you know, study the market a little bit more, study those 20,000 users that they have already. Well, develop the, the, the yeah, yeah, develop the service out of that. Right. And, and what I like about it as somebody who worked for the Small Business Administration for a lot of years is really good ideas morph out of something that they weren't. Mm -hmm. So they had a faith-based network and they realized people were using it as, mm -hmm. as a dating relationship app and they were willing to, to switch over True. to that. So that's exciting. Yeah. Now they have to talk to those people on that mm -hmm. platform and find out what elements they really want that fit. And it may include, you know, it may include the faith, but it may be a lot more of the other stuff. All right, well this one is going to be tough. Think we have a decision? I think we're... I think I, I, think, I, so. think I do, yes. All right, I think we have a decision. All right, here we are. Yao and Shanique, this is the moment of faith. This is when you will hear the judges' decisions. Dr. Deal, what has the panel of expert judges decided? Whew. So this was really tough, and I'm not just saying that. You guys actually made us work. <laughs> but the hard. judges are, yes. <laughs> we did deliberate, and we have come to a decision. And the contestant moving on to the second round is going to be Yao and Song. Congratulations. <laughs> um, give us some feedback for, for both contestants, Sure. Um, so Yao, specifically um, for you, the judges felt as if your your twenty thousand users, um, you should have made mention of that first. That's very important. To you your know? number one. Yeah. Pitch. Um, also, we want to make mention of you actually defining what differentiates you from other competitors. So I know you talked about the progress tracker and the online community, but we need you to actually define just a little bit more going forward. You know how you would. How, how your product, how your service differs from competitors, okay? But overall, you, you know, made mention of a problem, what the problem is, and how to solve that problem. So, good presentation, thank you. Thank you. Um, Shanique, we loved your idea, um, especially Ron and I being in academia. We thought that it would be useful to us. Um, just two suggestions for you going forward. Um, number one, Pick a, choose a specific target area. So for instance, do you want these conferences to focus on academia? Do you want it to be for, you know, in the government field, um, in the public sector, social services, um, maybe in the medical field, that may be saturated, but the idea is choose a specific area that you want to, to target, all right? And then just one other comment for you. Um, revenue stream. Again, I know you made mention of the ads, but I think you need to broaden it a little bit more about how your company anticipates, um, you know, earning revenue other than than ads. But overall, you guys did a wonderful job, and congratulations, Yao. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. All Thanks right. So well, Shanique, I have watched you over the last nine months or a year um, developing your ideas and moving forward. There's one thing about you: you never give up. So and take, don't and don't, don't give up because you're, you're, right it, you're right here. You're right here. So don't don't take this as anything but um, a win for yourself and, and your company. So thank you so much. 
Um, Yao, you're going to be uh, getting some support and mentoring between now and your round two pitch uh, to develop your pitching, uh, uh, pitching uh, capabilities a little bit and perhaps filling out your idea a little bit more. So you're invited back to round two. Thank you very much, both of you. And uh, remember to keep on pitching. Appreciate it. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it from the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Center here at the University of New Haven. Thank you for joining us today on Pitch Perfect. Make sure to tune in for our next episode. And remember, make it yours, make it real, and keep on pitching.